<laughs> so this is a basic service that um, allows you to uh, correlate metrics. Um, so what correlation is, it, it basically measures how um, two metrics are related to one another, right? So it will give you a number that says how one is related to the other uh, and let you know if there exists a relationship between them. Um, so some of the use cases for that is, let's say, uh, you know, you hit a particular threshold uh, on some event, you know, something peaks, uh, and then you want to see, you know, what could have potentially caused this, or, you know, uh, what else peaked at the same time. Um, so the idea is to be able to ask those, those kinds of questions and then get responses here. Um, so here is uh, the actual resource that um, we want to correlate for, right? So we can just start off by graphing that here. Um, so that'll pull the data in. We see there's a little spike at this time. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and correlate that. So what that's going to do is pull a complete list of metrics that are currently available. Um, there's 628 there now. And then it'll um, spawn a job that will correlate those all pairwise with the given metric here. Uh, and then return the top, top 10. Currently, this is all performed in a single JVM using um, the new APIs, but the goal is to actually uh, use Spark to uh, implement them. That way we can um, scale up the compute because it will get pretty resource intensive uh, if you're looking at, you know, um, order of thousands of metrics and the like. So here's the top eight resources it found for us. Um, so if we look at click on this one here, it'll sort of graph them both together and we'll see if there's a relation or not. Um, one of the problems with, with it, though, is that if uh, one of the lines is flat, it'll actually always correlate together. Um, so the other one is probably like zero or something. So uh, the way correlation works is if, if one is identical to zero, uh, then it'll, it'll go. So that, that point didn't work. But if we look at uh, load average here, We'll see that you know there is some relation. Of course, we're looking at CPU compared to load average, so of course they're related to one another. Um, but the idea is to be able to find these uh, automatically uh, and get the score here. So we see we got a couple false positives at the top um, that aren't really that interesting. So it's just raw context. We see slight peaks here whenever these large peaks come. Um, but other than that, it's relatively flat. Um, one of the interesting ones I saw was. Uh, system users. So if we see um, there's actually like spikes and CPU users whenever somebody logs in. <laughs> so you see these small little points at the bottom here. That's when there was a user logged in and we see that's whenever that CPU typically spikes. That's really cool. So the idea is to be able to um, do this automatically and again at Scale. They're using the loops back in problems, right? Right, so this is all uh, powered by Cassandra currently. So all um, so open NMS instances in um, on DigitalOcean now, pushing all the data to uh, Cassandra cluster there. Uh, and this is just pulling that data in and um, correlating it locally here. What are you using DigitalOcean? So I'm using uh, Apache Commons map to perform the So it's using the uh, Pearson correlation coefficient, um, which gives you a number between minus one and one. Um, and the closer to one or minus one it is, the, the stronger the metrics correlate together. Um, so one of the problems I ran into was I actually have all the code working in, in Spark, but it doesn't play well with, with others. Um, the Spark code it expects to be in its own um, JVM, so the idea is uh, now to try and integrate that into this. Um, so all of this that you see here now is actually running in, uh, in graph on in OSGI. From the service and the, um, the UI here. So that's it. Any questions? Why didn't the first one work? Why did not? <laughs> so it's. So the total rule is the, the amount of real memory in the system, so it's never changing. Yeah. But why would it correlate then? It correlates because it's a it's like a linear relationship. So uh, maybe if I do the math here. <laughs> Yeah, so, let's say you know the equation of a line. Does anybody know the equation of a line? Y is equal to mx plus c. That's all I remember. Can you turn it to the camera? Well, we'll just take a picture after. I'm shooting video of it. Oh, cool. Right, y is 
equilateral angle speed. So um, basically, the, so two metrics correlate if, let's say, um, in our, this case, x <laughs> x is the CPU raw user, and y is the memory. Mm -hmm. So if y can be expressed as a linear combination of x, um, then y correlates with x. So if this, if we can find m and b such that y is equal to mx plus b, then we say they correlate. And that number is a measure of how close a y is to this result. So if y is constant, then what we can do is we can just take 0x plus whatever y is, right, and turn that into b. So let's say that's some value k. Right, so y is equal to k, and then we have perfect correlation. Right, so if one of that, if one of these is constant, then it doesn't really work. Okay. Um, so we need a way of filtering that out. But. So filter out one where n equals zero. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Have you had any, given the data you've used, have you had any numerical problems where the numbers are too small or too large? The, the only problem is uh, whenever there's uh, missing data. Like not the like. Um, what I did now is just replace those with zeros. But the proper thing to do would actually be to interpolate those missing values. Right? So if there's large chunks of the uh, uh, missing values, like in the genome sequence, you just go yeah. to sort of, uh, raw DNA. You want to think about whether it makes sense to interpolate the values because that might make the statistics falsely report. Yeah. So we can. I've done too much statistics. But, I mean, yeah, there's still tons of proofs, but the, the basic framework is there to be able to do so. And then the idea is uh, do this in, um, you know, something that allows us to scale and just add compute to the problem. So the thing I was looking at last year when I was when we talked about the metrics was being able to scan a whole data center and then rank um, correlated machines so that you could actually see the these VMs should work together, should, should be on the same hardware, and these ones shouldn't be because of the correlation between the world. Uh, how easy would it be to extend this to you know, produce a rank? Relatively. So, right now we're just correlating against all of the metrics uh, at home, right? But the idea is to be able to start it up. Compare those against selected metrics. Let's say I wanted to only compare the, the CPU to network traffic and see if any network traffic correlates with that particular metrics, or you know, exclude um, other metrics on this given host here. Um, so all the top metrics are other metrics on the same node, right? But it may be other metrics. So that's sort of. Probably also match like bits in on this host and matching bits out on this one, right? And then make another topology provider. So yeah, they, we think there's a link between, between these two. Yeah. Because they, uh, well, the, the other one uh, we've got some was uh, if you have uh, the X statistics, okay. you can actually predict what the topology is right. for a lot of the network. So you can produce a topology based on the stats you've got, even if you don't know what's in the cloud. Very cool.